Hello students, welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children, we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class. So come on, let's proceed to our lesson for today. And today we are going to look at a beautiful lesson in EVS. And the lesson is lesson number 5 from your EVS textbook and it is understanding time. Okay, now when we talk about time children, we always think about the watch, we think about the clock, etc. Isn't it? But then today we will see along with these other things, what other terms and what other objects objects do we use in order to understand time we will also see how time is divided into three parts okay so today's lesson is going to be an interesting lesson there are going to be lots of beautiful pictures for you to see and understand so children whenever we start a lesson you should always pick up your textbook and keep it open Alright, so now you can all pick up your textbook and open it and come to page number 30 in your EVS textbooks. So we will know what we are learning and you will be able to understand better also. So like I told you, in today's lesson, we are going to understand what time is. Okay, so what is time? Time is divided into three parts. I told you now time is divided into how many parts? Into three parts. Just like in our body we have various parts. So to understand time also we have divided it into various parts. So we have the past. Okay past. Look at the pictures here. What is there along with the word past? There is a picture of a tiny baby, a small baby. So imagine that this is you, alright? So your past is when you were a small baby. And then you have the present, that is now present. See, you are around 8 years old. So this is how you look now. And then you have the future. Future means tomorrow. Okay. So past means yesterday. Whatever happened before, now. Present means now. Okay. Whatever is happening today. And future is what will happen tomorrow. So the time is divided into three parts. Past, present and future. Alright children, so slowly and slowly we will understand what is the meaning of past, what is the meaning of present and what is the meaning of future. We will also see what words we use when we are talking about the past, when we are talking about the present and when we are talking about the future. Okay? So let's see now. See, this is the past. Past means yesterday. Okay? Past means what? Yesterday. In simple words. And this is the present. Present means today. Okay? So whatever is happening now, today is the present. And then what is the future? It is tomorrow. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Isn't it? So whatever will happen after today is the future. So once again, listen to me and try to repeat also after me. So which are the three parts of time? It is P-A-S-T. Past, P-R-E-S-E-N-T, present, 
F-U-T-U-R-E, future. Okay, so time is divided into past, present and future. Isn't it inter interesting and isn't it simple also? Come on now, let's see which words we use when we talk about the past, the present and the future. So when we are talking about the present, now we use the words today. We use the word now. Okay. So see what will you say? Today is Saturday. Today is Saturday. You can also say, if you are talking about today, you will say about present. You will say, today is my birthday. Okay. So today. So what is the meaning of today? Today means present tense. So when we are talking about present tense, we use the word today. Okay. Let us look at some more examples of present tense. Will you go to school today? So you are talking about now. You are talking about today. Will you go to school today? Look at the next one. Mummy is baking a cake today. What is mummy doing? It is his birthday, isn't it? So mummy is baking a cake today. Alright. So once again, when we talk about the present, what do we use? We use today. Okay. Let's look at the next part of time now. It is future. Future means what will happen after today. That is tomorrow. So let's see what word we will use. Tomorrow is Sunday. So see what is the word used for future? It is tomorrow. We can also say tomorrow is my birthday. Tomorrow for future. Look at the next one. Will you go to school tomorrow? Okay. So tomorrow for the future. Mommy will bake a cake tomorrow. So I have used the same sentences and I have only changed the tense. So, what have I done when I changed the tense? I used tomorrow instead of today. Okay. When it was present tense, I used today. And when it is future tense, I used tomorrow. Alright, children. Let's come to the third part of time now. It is past tense. What tense? Past. Past means that which is gone, finished, past. Alright, so let's look at the words that we use. Yesterday was Friday. Yesterday was Friday. Look at the next one. Yesterday was my birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. Had you gone to school yesterday? Okay. So remember when we talked about present, we said today. When you talked about future, you said tomorrow. And when you talk about past, what will you say? Yesterday. Look at the next one. Mommy had baked a cake yesterday. Alright. So when you talk about past tense, you use the word yesterday. Alright children, so this is how time is divided into three parts. Interesting now? Now let's look at some more interesting things about time. So what is this? This is a calendar. You must have seen it at home. You see it in your class in the school. If you go to a bank or if you go to a shop, 
you tend to see such calendars there isn't it so what does the calendar do we use a calendar to check the dates and the day so whenever we want to check which date it is which day is it what do we do we immediately check the calendar okay then we also use the calendar we turn the page of the calendar to go to the next month so when you are on 31st january what do you do you change the page to go into february we turn the page on the calendar to go to the next month all right next is the numbers on the calendar indicate the dates so what are shown what is shown on the calendar the dates and that is you shown using the numbers okay so once again try and read what i have written we use a calendar to check days and dates we turn the page on a calendar to go to the next month and the numbers on the calendar indicate the dates all right so children hope you understood what is the meaning of a calendar and why and how do we use a calendar we use it in order to understand more about days about dates about month etc now let's see how we measure time now children time is very very important in our life isn't it we do everything according to the clock or to the watch in the mornings your mummy looks at the clock and she wakes you up isn't it you look at the clock and you decide that it is time to go to school you look at the clock and you decide that it is now time to go to sleep so measurement of time is very very important in our life so let us see how we measure time today how people measured time in the past also all right so see this is a water clock now in the ancient times olden times people did not have the mobile or they did not have the clock so how did they measure time they used a water clock like this okay so a water clock was used to measure time see one more water clock can you see this is one more water clock another type of water clock then these people they also used an hour glass an hour glass is also called as a sand timer can you see there is a kind of a, a glass which is connected there are two glasses which are connected and it is fitted on a wooden frame okay all the sand from the top glass drops gradually into the lower glass and once it is done then what you have to do is you had to turn it manually like this okay people had to keep on turning it now these glasses these kind of hour glasses they were used even in our country and hour means what it used to take one full hour 60 minutes for the sand from the top to come to the bottom okay so these kind of clocks were used in india also so this is how people measured time children during the ancient times during the past there was one more thing called as the sun dial all right so according to the position of the sun in the sky people used to measure time so this is a sun dial all right and then now you have modern ways of keeping time so you make use of watches you have 
digital watches also digital you need not even you just know need to know how to read you will be able to say the time okay so these are the modern ways of keeping time you also have these kind of calendars which we use in order to keep time now let's come to one more last point in our lesson time and history how is time connected to history so see we have these important things like coins etc which we find from underneath the surface of the earth when the people dig isn't it sometimes you will see these kind of statues also there are many other things that people find from underneath the earth like this can you see so many ancient objects like you have uh, statues you have coins you have pieces of pots pans etc which people find from under the earth when they are digging up the earth for whatever purpose all these things they study the scientist they study these things properly to understand about which time they belong to so history and time has also got a very very close connection all right children so in today's lesson we tried to understand time we saw that time is divided into three parts and the words that we use in order to describe the three parts of time so we say today for present we say yesterday for past and tomorrow for future we also saw the various instruments which people used to measure time in the olden days so there was a water clock there was the hourglass the sundial and today we use a calendar watch etc to measure time so children i had a lovely time looking at all these pictures and teaching you this hope you also enjoyed watching the pictures and understanding more about time so that is all today children from the virtual training center of the brihan mumbai mahanagar palika let us meet again next time for another interesting lesson in ebs till then thank you so much and goodbye so children wasn't that a wonderful video and did you enjoy watching it so if you want to watch more such videos in future then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel the mcgm portal for education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video here thank you so much for now let's meet again soon